Hi everybody, it's Mr. Posey, your AP Bio teacher. Today we are continuing our fifth unit on heredity by studying topic 5.3, which is on Mendelian genetics. We're actually going to split up this topic into two separate videos, the first of which where we introduce some basic genetics terms and figure out what genetics is all about, and maybe talk about Mendel a little bit, hence Mendelian genetics. And then we'll get into the probability type factors and learn how to do some dihybrid crosses and Punnett squares and that kind of thing. Hooray for genetics um, in the second video. All right, so uh, before we get started here, uh, before we get into that probability, we got to talk about what genetics is, and we got to talk about the experiments that Gregor Mendel did um, in order to get our basic grasp of what this is all about. So this unit's on heredity, right? And that's the process by which traits are passed down from parent to offspring, right? So human beings have known about heredity forever. You know, anybody could figure out that, like, if you have offspring, your offspring tends to be a little bit like you, right? And then, you know, their offspring tend to be like them and so on and so forth. And you pass down traits. So human beings have known that forever. But how that happens and why that happens remained a mystery up until the study of genetics and really until evolution as well. All right, so genetics, if we're defining it up here, is the study of heredity and inherited variation. How does everybody get so different from one another as well? All right, so we can use genetics to analyze the passage from traits to from a uh, passage of traits from parent to offspring of any organism. Right, so as long as you're an organism, you're a living thing. You are passing down your traits and you're passing down your genes, which are the instructions for those traits, from one generation to the next. That's just how it works. Um, it doesn't matter if you're a protist. It doesn't matter if you're some kind of prokaryote. It doesn't matter if you are a human being or an elephant or a mushroom. Um, all living things abide by the rules of genetics and speak the universal language of DNA. All right, so all forms of life have DNA or RNA and ribosomes that make proteins. All right, so if we're talking about major fields of biology, genetics is one of them, talking about how functions uh, relate to genes. Okay, well, we're going to get into molecular biology in our next unit, how genes produce proteins. <laughs> all right, uh, so... A little recap from one of our previous videos. We know that a fusion of two haploid cells, so that means a cell with one set of chromosomes each, makes one diploid cell. You combine those two different sets of chromosomes and a combination of each from mom and dad to get a brand new organism. That's, uh, that's sexual reproduction. You create new ge uh, genetic offspring and you need to create new uh, combinations. Hey, we can use math and we can use a little bit of probability to analyze which genes, which little segments of DNA, and which traits are going to get passed on uh, from parent to offspring, okay? So why does your sister um, have your mom's eye color and your brother, you know, have your dad's ear shape? I don't know. The, the explanations for these come from genetics, all right? That's the point I'm trying to make here. Um, and we can't talk about genetics without talking about Gregor Mendel. Gregor Mendel was the guy that really he's considered the father of genetics and he was a abby i want to say he was an abby monk and he was a substitute teacher um he didn't pass his placement exams to become a teacher and uh yeah so what he did is he crossed pea plants for fun in his garden in his backyard and did experiments and he did careful observations and careful experimentation here and really derived some explanations for how traits get passed on from one generation to the next and he could predict um, offspring, what, uh, what traits the offspring would have of one generation to the next. So how he did that, uh, he used pea plants to derive a theory of inheritance and basic principles of heredity, passing down traits. They, he controlled mating between pea plants by cross-pollinating them to determine which traits were passed on and in what amounts or ratios. All right, so he crossed pea plants and he studied the characteristics of these pea plants that would pass from one generation to the next. Okay, uh, let's, we're going to introduce a lot of terms here. All right, lots of terms in this unit. Okay, a character is a heritable feature that varies among individuals, and a trait is a variant for that character. All right, so this table down here is showing the different characters or characteristics um, that come from pea plants, right? So you could have different shaped peas, you could have different colored peas, you could have different flower colors, uh, pod shape, whatever, pod color. Those are all characters, okay? But if we're talking about traits, we're talking about a variant for a character, Okay, so if flower color is a character, that's the one that we're going to be talking about the most. Flower color is a character. Purple flower color is a trait, or a white flower color is a trait. Okay, so I'm going to be throwing those terms around a lot, and we want to make sure that we know what we're, uh, what we're discussing here. Okay, so here we go. Let's walk through one of Mendel's most famous experiments here. 
Uh, so here he is. He's in a garden, and he's crossing his pea plants, and he's like, hmm, what, what if I uh, cross two true breeding plants? And true breeding means that plants that produce the same offspring with the same traits as the parent, right? So you pick a pea plant that produced purple flowers that's been producing purple flowers forever, and a plant that is has white flowers and has you know descended from white flowered plants and will produce white flowered plants um, in the future. Okay, so we uh, we take those two plants and we cross them. Okay, or I shouldn't say we Mendel crossed them and called that the P generation. Uh, P is in parental crossed a plant with white flowers with the plant with purple flowers, and the result of that was that. He got all purple flowers. So we call those hybrids. If we're crossing two tree breeding one, we call them a hybrid. But all of the flowers in what we call the F1 generation that descended from the P generation were all purple. Interesting. All purple. There's no white ones. Okay. You, you would normally think if you didn't know anything better about genetics, oh, maybe there'll be a mix of white and purple. Or maybe, you know, it'll be half and half, some purple, some white, you know. But all of them were purple for some reason. So why is that? Well, it becomes more clear once you crossbreed those in the F1 generation again. Okay, so he took the uh, took the offspring from the parental and made them cross-pollinate with each other. I know a little creepy if you're not thinking about it as plants. Um, and you get the F2 generation from that. Okay, so you cross those and what happened is the white trait came back. The white flower trait came back. It was still a three to one ratio of purple to white flowers though. Okay, so the purple ones are appearing a lot more than the white ones and it's in almost exactly a three to one ratio. There's three purple flowers for every one white flower. Why is that? Well, from experiments like these he derived some other terms and he just derived four basic principles of genetics here that we'll discuss. Um, the purple flower color, and this is what he called it, the purple flower color is what he called dominant. And the white trait is what we call recessive or masked. And it occurs in several other pea plant traits. There's dominant and uh, recessive traits for lots of other characters for pea plants. Okay, so we call it the dominant trait because, well, it, there's more of it. And the recessive trait, there's less of it. Okay, and it's masked. It's covered up. The, tr the genes for the white flowers were covered up in this generation. And, well, a little bit in this generation, too. And they reappeared in the F2 generation. Okay, and we're going to look at how uh, that happens in our next video here when we talk about Punnett squares. All right, so it's our four concepts of Mendel's model of inheritance. He came up with four concepts um, to derive his theory of how um, traits are inherited and how variation occurs within uh, populations of organisms. Uh, concept number one is that alternative versions of genes... And genes are, you know, the, these are the little segments of DNA that provide instructions to give, a, give an organism a trait. Um, alternative versions of genes account for variations in inherited characters. And alleles, that, that's what these are called, they're represented by letters, okay? We represent them with letters. But an allele is an alternative version of a gene. So you have a gene in a plant for, that produces a flower color, and you can have the purple flower allele, or you can have the white flower allele. Or, well, actually, it's more than just one allele. Check out number two here. For each character, an organism inherits two copies of a gene, one from each parent. So this goes back to meiosis. You get one copy of a gene from one parent, one copy of a gene from another parent, and there you are. You're a diploid. Look at you. Okay? So we represent these pairs of genes that are alternative versions of genes called alleles. We represent these with little pairs of letters. Okay, so th this is our P generation here. We got one purple flower, and it's got two what we call dominant alleles, and the, uh, the recessive alleles, little a, little a, as they're so often called, will produce a white flower color. Okay, and when you give one of each to your offspring, this is what you're going to end up with, one of each allele. Okay, um, and we're going to see exactly how this is later on. All right, so uh, concept number three, if two alleles at a locus differ with like our, like right here, okay, we got one dominant allele and one recessive allele, the dominant allele determines the organism's appearance. The recessive allele has no noticeable effect on the organism's appearance. Okay, so uh, we, let's go back to our flowers here. All of our flowers in the F1 generation were purple. That's because each of them had at least one dominant allele that they got from the true breeding purple flower parent. 
Okay, so all of them have at least one dominant allele. And that dominant allele, we call it dominant because it's expressed over the other allele. It's, it's, it's dominates it, okay? It's like, this is what's going to be expressed and not the other allele. Okay, so all of these, even though they had the uh, white color flower allele, or white flower color allele, um, they were all purple because they had one dominant allele. All right, and then number four, it's what we call the law of segregation. Two alleles for a heritable character segregate during gamete formation and they end up in different gametes. All right, so this uh, is a callback to our topics on meiosis as well. Okay, I kind of drew a little picture here. Uh, one allele's in one gamete and the other allele's in another gamete and they, they separate during gamete formation. It's not, one gamete is not going to have two alleles for one gene. That's what we're trying to say here, okay? So with that, this is basic introduction to Mendelian genetics here. In our next video, we're going to be getting into the probability part of it and really seeing, um, really seeing how these are illustrated in Mendel's experience, experiments. All right, uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.